Hey everybody, welcome back to Run and Gun. I'm JT, and in this video, I'm gonna be editing your photos. All right, so we are here in Lightroom, and today I am editing Dennis's photos. He sent me an email and asked if I could edit a couple of his photos, and I really liked his shots of this model underwater. I think they looked really great, and I think with some editing, we can really make them pop. The tips and tricks we're gonna to use today are things I've already taught in our previous Lightroom tutorials, so if you wanna go ahead and watch those before you watch this, go ahead or just open up Lightroom and follow along. So I'm gonna start with this shot down here of this model swimming between these two little bits of, I believe, coral. I'm not a marine biologist, but that's gonna be my best guess. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Dennis shot this on a Sony Alpha 6500, and you can see his settings over here, ISO 640, 11 millimeters, F5.6, at one hundredth of a second. And the first thing you notice with this photo, the before, it's kind of hot. So we did a bunch of editing and I'm gonna show you guys the after image right here as soon as it wants to load. So here is the after, after all the edits that I've made in Lightroom. And here is the final image after we've made some finishing touches in Photoshop. So let's get started back from the beginning and I'll walk you through everything I did to edit this shot. So one of the first things I did this photo was extremely blue, so I warmed it up a little bit. It was also a little bit green. You can see from that preview on the left-hand corner when I highlight over it, it was quite green compared to this final shot. So I tinted it a little more towards the magenta end of the scale over here. I also brought down the exposure quite a bit and you can see because the shot was a little bit overexposed, there's some of these areas up here that were clipped just a little bit, and we couldn't really save all of the detail in the highlights, but we did manage to bring back quite a bit of it. As you can see, if you can compare over here the little preview of the before image to what we did in Lightroom. I left the contrast right where it was. I left our highlights right where they were because if I brought down the highlights too much, I started getting some funky colors up here in the water, so I didn't want to mess with that too much. And again, if you're trying to reset a slider in Lightroom, don't mess with wiggling it back and forth to hit zero. Just double click it and it will reset back to zero. Now I did bring our shadows up quite a bit from zero up to 83. As you can see, it's only affecting a little bit over here up by these fish and under these, I guess, coral formations over here and in here just a touch. I also brought up the whites to kind of create a bit of contrast up in the top and I brought down the black slider from zero to about negative 40, negative 50 to kind of crush the blacks and give us some nice deep rich blacks in these shadows. So scrolling down here a little bit more, I bumped up our clarity a touch and I also bumped up dehaze. So dehaze is a great tool, especially when you're shooting underwater. It was designed to cut through the haze of atmosphere and water is just like shooting in a very hazy above water situation. And it just adds some more blacks and some contrast and it just kind of cuts through that hazy look that you just naturally get shooting underwater. I also bumped up our vibrance a touch and I might even bump it up a little bit more. And you can start to see these really neat colored uh, bits of coral and all these underwater plants here start to pop. You can also see these fish, almost like a neon purple, start to really pop out compared to the before. So again, there's the before, everything's all washed out and there is our edited photo. So I'm going to come down here to our tone curve. Now our tone curve looks a little bit crazy and that's because I used the targeted adjustment tool, which is really awesome and you can check out more about that in my curves tutorial. But for right now, I'll give you a quick preview of what I did. Now this targeted adjustment tool is super helpful. So instead of trying to create an S curve in this window or slapping a preset on it, I can select tones here 
from my actual image and either lighten or darken them. I'm exaggerating this for the effect of this video right now, but that is how I got this crazy looking tone curve. I went into the highlights and bumped up the highlights a little bit. I went into the midtones and bumped up some of the midtones a little bit and just went through and edited to taste. So when you have your own photo, just kind of edit to taste because it's your photo. Just make it look how you want it to look. So another tool I used down here was split toning, and I didn't really talk about this in any of my other videos, so let's get into it here. So if I turn split toning off, you can see the image was quite green and quite cool, so let's turn split toning back on. And this is where I move the hue over to this orangish red end of the spectrum, and I turned up the saturation on that so I could get some color in the shadows down here in our plants. And I also added a little bit of yellow to the highlights to kind of add some green up here. And again, add some more yellowish, orangish, warm hues down here to create some color contrast in this scene. So again, if I turn this off and I turn it back on again, I just warmed up this bottom part of the image and I really think I gave it some life and I gave it some depth so your eye kind of explores around the bottom of the image a little bit and then makes its way towards the top. All right, so let's move down here to the detail tab, which is our sharpening and noise reduction. And I always like to take this little zoom tool, put it right over the face of my model or subject and do all of my sharpening based on the subject of the image. And in this case, the subject would be Dennis's model right here. So I turned up our sharpening a touch I turned up the detail a touch, and I also turned up our masking, which as you know, just selects certain parts of the image. So if I hold alt and I slide our masking slider, you can see it turns our image black and white, and everything that is black is not being sharpened, and everything that is white is being sharpened. So you can see there are some noisy parts of the image that I don't want sharpened anymore. So I turned up our masking quite a bit, to only sharpen the edges, the very pronounced edges, especially around the model and around the coral. And once our sharpening looks good, let's slide down to noise reduction. I bumped that up quite a bit down here because there was a little bit of noise in the water and in the shadows, just because Dennis shot this photo at ISO 6400. And naturally there are a lot of particles and all sorts of things floating around here underwater. So noise reduction just helps us get rid of those and focus on the details that we really want to in this plant life, the fish, and of course our subject. So that looks pretty good. I think everything in Lightroom looks good. So the next thing I did was I right clicked on the image and went to edit in Adobe Photoshop. And here's our image imported into Photoshop. And to simply finish this off, I added some curves and my cool and lifted LUT. So we can look at the before, the after. Here is the cool and lifted LUT. You can find that on my website at therunninggun.com. I'll link to that in the description. But here is the LUT, the before and after. It just lifts our shadows, adds some very sea green and blue tones and really makes the oranges and yellows in here pop. It's a neat kind of orange and teal look that I've been working on. And I did think we lifted our shadows up quite a bit. So I did add some curves to make these oranges really pop. You can see our histogram where our shadows were lifted by the LUT. And I just dropped our shadows a bit raise the highlights a bit and just did a very simple S curve. So there are the curves off and there are the curves on. It just added a touch of contrast and a bit of punch to this image. So that is it for this shot. Let's go take a look back in Lightroom at our other shot that Dennis took. So here is the before. I think this is a really awesome shot with this model hanging out under here. I love the transparency and translucency of that shirt. Here are the edits that we did in Lightroom. Added some contrast, did a lot of similar things that we did to our other shot. And here is our final shot, just kind of a cool teal and orange look. 
And so if you guys want to follow me back to the beginning, I'll go through and I'll show you what I did to this shot. So the first thing I did was I cropped the image. I thought the shot looked a little bit better if I zoomed in and kind of cropped into the model a bit more. So I did a five by seven crop and brought it down to center up our model. So that looks good. And let's go in here. Once again, I warmed it up just a little bit. You can see in our preview up here, if you watch this little upper left hand screen, you can see it was a little bit cool and it was a little bit green. So I added some magenta tint and I turned up the temperature of the image just a little bit to warm it up just to make our skin tones a little bit more warm and lively. I turned up the exposure just a bit and I also turned up the contrast a touch. Now scrolling down, you could see in the preview image we had some hot spots around the top of the image. And before I ended up cropping, I turned down our highlights a bit and I turned up our shadows quite a bit so I could see the detail in the model's face. It was just getting a little bit lost in the shadows as you can see in the upper left preview of our before image. In this case, our whites looked pretty good so I left them at zero and I turned our blacks down a touch just to add some nice rich dark black tones here in the rocks. And let's scroll down to presence. I bumped up our clarity a hint and I also did the same dehaze technique just to cut through all of the I guess sea life that is floating around in this water. I don't know what kind of plankton or bits of whatever are floating around, but they kind of look like noise and they add a little bit of that hazy atmosphere to our shot, which is great. It adds depth, but I still want to see our model's face. So I turned up that dehaze a bit. So I took that from right here at zero and I turned that up to about 20 just to cut through some of this junk in the water. I also turned up our vibrance a touch just to add some color to this image and protect our skin tones. I really don't like messing with saturation all that much. In 99% of my images, I'll just leave that at zero. For our tone curve, I guess I left that one alone for this image. And for split toning, I did a very similar technique to the last image. I warmed up our highlights I could have selected any tone on here and you can see I can mess with our highlights. It actually kind of looks cool with some teal highlights. I'll take that back down to orange, maybe bump the saturation just a touch more. And then I went down and I actually cooled our shadows off a little bit because our shadows were looking too warm from when we messed with our highlights here. So I wanted to cool down some parts of the image because it still should look mostly cool because we are underwater. So that is all for split toning. I also went down to our detail menu. I sharpened the face of our model quite a bit. Down here, I brought up our sharpening slider to 67. I also turned up the radius just so our sharpening was affecting larger parts of the image like the hair, the nose, the eyes, and not these very tiny specks of junk in the water. I also turned up our masking again to only sharpen what I wanted sharp, which was the larger features in the face and not the tiny bits of stuff floating in the water. And I also turned up our noise reduction quite a bit. This image was shot at ISO 1000, so it was just slightly noisier than the last image that we edited. And for effects, I added a slight vignette just to really bring our subject out and make her pop. You can see the edges of the frame were extremely bright, so I added a nice vignette. So those are our edits from Lightroom. Here is the before, here is the after, and once again, to bring our images into Photoshop, I will edit in Adobe Photoshop. So let's head over to Adobe Photoshop where I did the exact same thing. We can start from scratch here, and I literally just selected our color grade from the last image and clicked and dragged, 
and dropped it on this image just to kind of keep the same theme throughout images. I really like to create a new look or a new LUT every time I work on a set of images from a similar location. Here is the before in Lightroom. Here's after adding the cool and lifted LUT and just adding a bit of contrast. I think I'm actually going to go into our curves and add some more shadows in there, just a little bit more punch. So I think that looks pretty good. There is the before from our Lightroom edit, and there is our final image. I like how the face is about the same tone as these rocks down here, and this rim lighting from the light coming through the water up here. That just looks really neat. And I think Dennis did a great job taking these photos, and I really can't wait to see more of his imagery. So let's once again take a look at our befores. Here is the completely unedited, uncropped, unretouched image. Here is our final shot. And once again, our first image here is the before. And here is the final out of Photoshop. So that is all for this episode. If you guys would like me to edit your photos, shoot me an email at runagunphoto at gmail.com and I'm sure we'll do another episode like this. I think this was a lot of fun. Be sure to check out Dennis's Instagram and Facebook. I will have them linked down in the description and make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button. I will see you guys next weekend and until next time, get out and go shoot.